Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and I am here with an early look at Kerbal Space Program version 0.21, the next step. Now, first thing you notice is a completely redesigned space center, looking as brilliant as always, but now the shading is dynamic, and you can rotate the whole thing centered around the vehicle assembly building. There's a couple of new buildings there, uh, one of which is clickable. If you look, you can see recognize the vehicle assembly building, the tracking station, the launch pad the runway and of course the space plane hangar but on the left in the bottom left corner we have this uh, new building here which is the astronaut complex where you can now recruit astronauts to your uh, thing oh look there's Scott Kerman who's not brave and very stupid what do you get trying to say guys seriously yeah I, I, this is obviously like a step towards career mode right now uh, there's not much more than them getting assigned and them getting killed. Uh, so I can go back to the space plane hangar now. And Well, space plane hangar is awesomely redesigned and has world car and your know, trucks drifting around there, Oakland style. Uh, I like it. I, I think these Kerbal drivers are... You know, <laughs> it seems that having crazy Kerbal pilots is just the same as having crazy Kerbal drivers. I mean, it's a par for the course if you're in charge of a vehicle in uh, on Kerbin. Anyway, uh, one of the things I've not you've noticed here is the rocket-powered V2OL. I've added solar panels and batteries. For the reason is that uh, now to get torque from the cockpit, it will take power. And a lot of the stock vehicles right now, this is an early version, so I'm sure this will get uh, improved upon. Uh, they need to have some extra power added, or you find yourself, you know, running out of power halfway through your flight. Especially true for the rocket-powered VTOL because the uh, little radial rocket motors don't actually generate electrical current. I can, of course, add crew to it. So I've allocated Scott Kerman, not to be confused with Scott Crossfield, the X-15 pilot. Oh. So, uh, yeah, let's talk throttle up. And away we go. And, of course, what's the best place to go? I think let's go and head over and try to get a closer look at one of those new, new buildings, right? Of course, it's usually... a uh, it's been always a challenge to try landing on the roof of the vehicle assembly building, so let's continue that tradition. I'm using the new stabilizer here. The stabilizer is now, it's not a module that you plug in, it's uh, built into the cockpit, and it tunes itself a whole lot more, a whole lot nicer basically. If you have large aircraft now, they don't wobble all over the place when you enable the stabilizer. And uh, they also don't lock in place when you use the stabilizer. Now it will uh, recognize that you are in fact trying to turn and stabilize you rather than holding you lock solid, you know, pointed in exactly the direction you want to get away from. Now you notice that the new roof of the vehicle assembly building is no longer nearly as clean or as simple as it once was. Yes, I know in the past it was possible to land that uh, rocket assisted uh, husky on the roof, but now there's only a couple of very small flat areas with big H's on them for helicopters which aren't actually in the real game, but presumably the H stands for hover spacecraft should land here. <laughs> You can also see the, I'm guessing that's like the the mission control or whatever though, there in the right, but we're not sure. The new tracking station, if you look at the uh, radars, they actually turn slowly over time. They'll turn and then they'll, you know, following a target across the sky and then they'll track onto another target. I am, I spent a lot of time mucking around and I still screwed it up. I, I don't know why, I guess I, <laughs> I just had a bad time flying this thing. Trying to get it on to the much, much smaller area is is a whole lot harder. And at this point, I totally started to lose it and hit the wrong key trying to control it. And of course, we still have no interior, so I left myself on the roof. But look, I'm on the roof, on the roof, on the roof of the vehicle assembly building. Unfortunately, I can't get out. Thankfully, uh, this does have a special emergency escape system. If I press space, I should be able to jettison all the pieces. There we go, just roll that out of the way, and now Scott Kermit is free from the wreckage. Free to go about his business and explore the roof of this vastly improved, uh, <laughs> vastly improved location. There's even got little stairwells down the side there, you see that? Well, just jumped out. I'm not sure, are there stairs to actually get up to the helipad, or is that just, like, left higher than the rest of things? Um... 
I think it was B9 that's been up doing the station or the doing the asset remodeling. I'm not confirmed on that. I, think, I know Ron Ferrer's been working on menu design and C7 was doing the uh, stability changes. Philippe uh, Harvester, he's talked about planet changes, planet mesh changes, and Mu, of course, is working on you know more back-end asset management stuff, you know, things like adjusting the planet database and things like that. Stuff that you don't really get to see that much of. Look at Nice. It looks nice from above, I have to say. A lot of a lot of good modeling going on there. Very nice, clean lines there. Totally not like a... Totally practical, unlike most Kerbal rockets. Oof. Of course, to get down from the roof, that's the way I have to go. There's no interior, as far as I can tell. Oh, well, get up on here. Oh, darn. You see, if this was really a Kerbal building, they would not have that grill there protecting people from getting sucked in. <laughs> You would just get chopped up. Why would you need such a thing on a Kerbal building? Hey, jump! Oh! Yes. Bang! Oh, he smacked his head on the air conditioning unit. They seem to have a lot of these in this building here. <laughs> oh, oh, clipping through, clipping through. So yeah, let's uh, let's get off this building and head over towards where the... There's another... The, let's head over to the tracking station get a closer look at it right now. Just one more jump. Yay, the daring Scott Kerman heading over the side of the vehicle assembly building and now sprinting at 16 meters per second, or at least that's what it looks like, towards the newly remodeled and redesigned tracking station. Listen, look at this more. Looks great. I, I think they must have gone... I wouldn't be surprised if they looked at pictures of places like Jodrell Bank or whatever, because this reminds me of a lot of radio telescopes I, I've looked at with the... You know, with paths and stuff all around it, all nicely modelled. You know, nicely landscaped, and then a giant radar dish there. This is the the building. I think everything is is you know three way symmetrical. I think, I think they just basically took it and then copied it three times. <laughs> but that's fine. You know, it's it's looking great. Anyway, to see more, we really have to take to the air to appreciate these new assets. And so we take one of the aircraft. This is a can't remember the Airbus A threes. Uh, you know, very small and light, and with the addition of the new stabilization system, it is really a lot more flyable. Yeah, let's get this up here. And, well, we can actually, there is actually a tower that we can buzz. Hello! Yes, make him spill his coffee and all that, right? And turning the stabilizer on, you notice that this thing, just like, you turn it, and you let go, and it stops turning. It is very stable. Oh, wait, it doesn't stop. You're completely losing control. Oh, excellent recovery, though. <laughs> uh, let's tur try turning around again, this time without crashing. Just flying along at 100 meters, not bad at all. Uh, let's let's bring it up and over. Let's see what else we can see. There's the the astronaut training complex. Let's try and fly over that. Get in nice and close. Try not to break the windows, right? Although they did test that on MythBusters, it, it uh, you can get some real amazing pressure effects from you know, supersonic aircraft flying over the top and but windows don't tend to smash apparently. Oh dear, almost losing it again. <laughs> now it's not just the space center that's been done. If you see in the background there's some epic mountains. The mountains to the the west of the space center are now much improved and we should uh, head over there and take a closer look at this new construction. Yeah, previously in the game we never had anything as steep as this to try flying around. Look, we can actually fly through some fairly steep valleys here, although I'm not sure what would cause mountains quite this steep, uh, at least on this scale. Yeah, we, can, we can pretend it's glaciation and the Ice Age and things like that, but honestly, it's all about the game design. Oh, that actually looks like a, what do you call it, a quarry or whatever, where a glacier starts. Let's split these peaks and get down into this valley here. Nice. Yeah, it's you know some great scale here. You can fly. It's great to be able to fly down below the height of the mountains. Okay, let's try and thread this here. Get over. Dot hit. Dot hit. Yes, and now down. Oh, there's a nice little valley. Let's get through that. Okay, try to not overdo it. What I'm worried is if I pull too hard, I will flip out and I will instantly die because I'll be so close to the side. So I'm trying to make sure I don't overdo it, but I want to get nice and low in this valley. So it'll be like Beggar's Canyon. Where's some womp rats? I used to tea, I used to bullseye womp rats in my T-16 back home. They're not much bigger than two meters. I mean, it's amazing how Luke Skywalker even sounds whiny when he's boasting about his skills. 
Uh, <laughs> you know, yes, he was a hero, but you know, Han Solo was always the cooler one, even though you know he didn't become the Jedi Knight. But his kids did, apparently. Aha! Excellent. So yes, that is a rather. It, you see, it ch it uh, transitions nicely back to the plains towards the Kerbal Space Center. Let's just get down here. You get you starts out with these kind of nice cut hills here, and then you know, eventually turns into the much bigger and grander mountains. I'm not sure if, if you can actually walk up these, whether they're too steep or not. Anyway, um, the other thing, of course, was mentioned was that Harv has been working on a new moon design. So, moon has completely changed, which is one reason why the, um, why the, the save compatibility is being broken. It's partly because of crews. And because the new planetary body, you know, surface, everything that's sitting on the moon would just explode and people might not like that. So anyway, the developers have made it clear that the uh, next version will break compatibility. What you want to do is just copy your entire Kerbal Space Program folder and create a new install and you'll all, everything will be saved and preserved for future reference. And you can do that from Steam by looking at the game properties and finding out the local files. Anyway, um, this is the moon. Now, if you look up in the top right, you'll see my electric charge has decayed a little. That is because it is now used whenever you turn your spaceship using the capsule. There is no power generation on this spacecraft at this time. Um, obviously, I've mentioned that a number of scenarios in stock spacecraft now kind of have limited lifespans because they don't have enough power to keep themselves moving. Um, so I think actually some of my minimal parts challenges will be somewhat afflicted by this. I, I don't think my, you know, five-part spacecraft to Gilly may work so well anymore. Um, anyway, yeah, you see that as I'm, as I touch this, as I'm moving this, it, it does make my electric charge go down. Anyway, yeah, the new surface of the moon, it's basically the same textures as everything as far as I can tell, but it's a new uh, normal map, or a new um, height map, and the height map uses um, procedural math to basically generate new craters and it generates a lot of craters i'm not sure this is the final version uh, you know we'll see i guess it is still in development but maybe with testing they might find the surface of the moon is just a little too hilly a little too hard to find places that you can land this is me trying to slow down as quickly as possible before i crash into something uh, <laughs> there's a giant ridge there approaching i wonder how long i'm gonna manage no i think i'm gonna go up just to make sure i get over there <laughs> yeah, look at those surfaces. Okay, anyway, yeah, as you can see, um, you can just, of course, right-click on the capsules or the, the ASAS or the SAS units that are providing torque and, you know, disable that or if, you know, and it's possible to actually land these things with no torque just by using the, using the, um, the gimballing action on the main engine. But I'm just, I apparently thought I turned off, I turned off my capsule, but I left my SAS unit running. Anyway, you can see the surface of the moon is definitely a little less forgiving than it once was, but I have made it down onto the surface using this stock vehicle with a small amount of fuel left. Uh, well, I mean, uh, electric charge. I mean, can you believe that electric charge is now the critical factor in the landing? That engine doesn't generate uh, power, anyway. So yeah, that's a quick look at Kerbal Space Program 0.21. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.